Hello, this is David from DN Cognitive Counseling. What I'm going to show you tonight is deeply disturbing. And it's very sad that we're here today. But I think it's important that we break this down and have an honest conversation about what's going on and what could potentially keep happening if we keep doing these things. So I'm going to be breaking down an incident that has taken place in Lake Orion, Michigan. And it takes place when a African-American mother and a 15-year-old daughter confront a Caucasian woman, which seems to be that it started over a bump. And I want to see where this goes and how things can escalate. Want to violate a 15 year old? No, I'm not even going to you. Why you walk into me? So she did come to me to apologize. This is a woman. This is a woman. This is a 15 year old. Correct. And you're on camera. Okay. You're feeling great. No, mom. I got this. You're blocking me from No, we weren't. No, we weren't. No, we weren't. You're angry. Okay, so we hear basically the mother and the daughter are very upset because the person allegedly bumped into her. Now, if you want to de-escalate something like this, the easiest thing to do is do what? You say you're sorry. Let's supposing for a minute she didn't bump into her. It was a situation where the person thought they bumped into them. Or she hit the wall and said, oh, you bumped into me. Let's, let's even go with that. What would it have cost to say, oh, I'm, if, if you feel I bumped into you, I'm very sorry, it wasn't my intention. But what you're seeing is basically somebody standing their ground and saying, no, I don't want to do that. Now, did she have to apologize? No, she doesn't. If she felt like she didn't do something. But in terms of the ability to de-escalate something, the apology here probably would have been the easiest way. Now, in terms of the mother and the daughter, they're obviously very upset and they're very angry. And are they acting in the most appropriate ways? No. They're pushing a situation. Instead of just saying, excuse me, you bumped into me, um, would you please say you're sorry? And her saying, no, wow, something's wrong with this girl, and keep going. They're making this into a bigger incident. Where remember, this started with a bump. She's ignorant. She's very ignorant. Okay. Now we get to the idea, instead of just bringing it the idea that I want an apology, we get to the idea where somebody escalates to threat, where I'm going to beat somebody up, where I'm going to get violent. The problem here is, is that anger does not justify being violent. And it seems today that more and more people keep thinking that the more angry they are, the more justified they are in violence. The sad part is, okay, let's take that for example. The more angry you get and cause violence, what does that do to the other person or other side that you're being violent towards? Don't they get angry? And if you're justified in your violence, wouldn't they be just as justified in their anger and violence? This is basically how you get to war, right? You, you feel justified in what you're saying. You feel justified in what you're doing. The other, feel, other side feels justified, and then you fight till somebody is no longer there. And that's how you get to these types of things and, and escalations. Oh, you will do something. Please do something. Do something. Please. Who the fuck do you think you guys are? Who, 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 who do you think you are? You told me you didn't do it. Yeah, I did it. I did it. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You're very racist and ignorant. Now, there's nothing here so far that would elevate to the aspect of somebody calling somebody racist. In fact, he said. She didn't do anything to you. Now, I don't know how he knows she didn't do anything, but let's assume for a minute wrongly that he said she did nothing. He is defending somebody, whether it's his daughter or his wife, I'm not exactly sure, or, or friend, I mean, it could be anything. But he's defending her, and he's taking her in the car and saying, listen, 
I, I, I shouldn't do anything, let this alone. Automatically, this jumps to racism. This is right now something that's being overly blown out now, where every conflict, every situation, it must be race. And that, of course, isn't true. We're people, we're individuals. The sad part is, is that so many people are seeing the narratives and the views all through race because the media is focusing only on race. But this is a situation between two people, not between two races. Now, in that, the woman who is in the car attempts to try to de-escalate, saying, I care about you. Nobody here is doing anything about race. This got nothing to do with race. But again, there's an escalation. The aspect here is, then why don't you apologize? Then why don't you apologize? Well, what it would have been very nice of her to say is that I'm very sorry. What would it have cost her to say I'm sorry? Would she have lost something for the I'm sorry? Would have life have been horrible because she said I'm sorry? Sometimes saying I'm sorry, even if you feel you didn't do something wrong, is still a better situation than to maintain the anger and the frustration to create more and more problems. And then, because of her statements, the mother of this daughter goes to the back of the car. Very My watch! We had a bump between possibly a 15-year-old and a woman who potentially may be pregnant. I've read that. And it started off that they started pulling away. The person goes to the back of the car, hits the back of the car. And instead of just pulling away and continuing or not worrying, they come out of the car and, of course, pull out a weapon. Now, a lot of people are saying, wow, this is a justified behavior because she felt threatened. They were in the car. They were safe. They could have pulled away and still left. But that's not what happens. They come out of the car to check the car to see if it what damages to the car, as opposed to just getting out of the situation. Maybe then calling the police and then if they want to make a report or be able to look at damage later. But the nature of at this point pulling out the gun. I remember many years ago an officer said never pull out a gun unless you plan on using it. Because that's really what the idea is when you're pulling out lethal force. Now does this really warrant lethal force? Do we sit and want to live in a society where a bump or somebody hits the car now goes to the idea that I pull out a gun? What's worse is after the gun is pulled out, you would assume an individual with a gun pointed at them pulls back. Whoa, 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 stop. Whoa, what are you doing? That's not what happens here. Oh, oh, watch. Call the cops! Get the fuck away! Call the cops! Get away! Get the wife in the car. Call them. I'm telling you. Get the wife in the car. Get the wife in the car. Now. You would never have to hit me in the car. Don't you fucking know. Call Richard Beckham. Call Richard Beckham. Call Richard Beckham. Call Richard Beckham. I got it. Don't you fucking jump off. I know. I ain't jumping. I ain't jumping. Don't you fucking jump off. Mom, stop moving. Stop. Now the 15 year old says stop moving. And do you know why the 15-year-old screaming, stop moving? Because when somebody's pulled a gun on you, and the idea is that you are going to hold them, by moving forward, what you're doing is saying, basically, that I'm possibly going to lunge for the gun. And depending, I think this again was in Michigan, I don't know the laws in Michigan, but at that point, the person holding the gun could make the claim that they feel like you're going after the gun. 
and then would give him the right to shoot you. And this woman is pushing her. And now, I'm very thankful that the woman holding the gun starts pulling away back instead of holding her ground. Because by backing away, she at least creates more of that distance. But again, do you see how one bump with the tensions being so high and people's emotions, you get to the idea of a gun being pulled on somebody in a parking lot. Now, the nice part is they finally do pull back. And that is the best part of this because nobody was shot. But do you see how easily it could have went down another way? Do you see how easily it could have been that this could have been another shooting? And with people being very upset and angry. This is what happens when people see things through the realm of race. And the sad part is that the comments on this video, people are discussing about it in terms of race and groups. As instead of talking about the individuals in this video and um, both, both of them doing things that were, that could have lessened this situation, that if they both would have been responsible, it didn't need to get to this level. Instead of talking about it from that standpoint, people are now taking camps about who's right and who's wrong and based upon, wow, look at the aggressiveness, and wow, we need to push back, and looking at it from the realm of their groups or their tribes. It's a very dangerous thought process. It's also not a truthful one. There is no group that acts uniformly. Not everybody seeing this video who is going to be of any descent will agree a uniformly across the board. If you were to ask people all who are born in Japan or all born in China or all born in Kenya what they think about this video you will get different opinions. That is the nature of human beings. Groups do not think monolithic yet people on the comments on this video sadly talk about it as wow look how they act. Now, I'm going to ask you, who's the they? What do you mean that they act? There is no they. Even in the aspect of the protests, which, by the way, predominantly, I, I can't even say predominantly, there is a mixture in the protest, but the idea is that people who are in that protest are not monolithic in their racial, ethnic, um, sex. Uh, there's nothing monolithic about them. And whatever you're going to find pro, you'll find against in the same demographic. In other words, if you find an African-American man who is pro the protest or the pro the rioting, you could find an African-American man who is against a protest or a rioting. You will find that there are varying different opinions. There are no racial groups that are monolithic in thought. And when we see people that way, and we think of people that way, that is the definition of being racist. When you say white people are, that's a racist thought. When you say black people are, that's a racist thought. If you say African Americans are, that's a racist thought. Because all those things incorporate the idea that these groups are all the same. That they all think and they all act the same way. And they don't. The way they view things are different. The way they think about things are different. There's a great video with Mark Lamont Hill and Candace Owens. Both of them African American. I wish that both were male or both were female. It would make it a lot easier. But the truth of the matter is you could have had the same debate with Mark Lamont Hill and um, uh, uh, Thomas Sowell or um, Larry Eldridge. It, it doesn't make a diff. Larry Elder. It doesn't make a difference who that would have been. But she had a debate with him. And they absolutely held different opinions. And then you have 
a man like uh, Sam Harris and a man like uh, uh, Jordan Peterson, uh, both white males, and they have a debate and they don't agree with each other. And they see things totally different. And this idea that people should be identified by their racial or ethnic group or by their sex or by their sexual orientation is absolutely erroneous. And yet, we keep hearing and we keep seeing people making these statements over and over and over about the group. Same thing happens with religious groups. All Jews are. All Muslims are. All Christians are. And the answer is none of the above for most things. You might find that there are some base group, you know, base ideology that's similarity. But even in those groups, it's not monolithic in thought. And they don't believe or see things only one way. And we are simplistically bringing people down to that aspect of only looking at their group, which is what you see when she talks about the racism, which, by the way, I do believe is part of the reason why people not as are coming to the defense of this woman about her action, which was to escalate it to pull out a gun. Again, I, I understand that you don't want your car hurt, and I do understand that. But to shoot somebody over it? Is that what we're going to get to? You scratched my car, I now shoot you? I, I don't know if this is what we want to do as a society. Is this really where we want to go? This video makes me very, very sad. But more importantly, and by the way, I don't get to the end, they, they drive away. But more importantly, the aspect here is not just about the video and the sadness of the video. The biggest sad part for me is that we're living in a society today where people now take a look at this and talk about groups. I really was happy, well, let me rephrase that. I was filled with the idea of hope with the amount of people who came together and recognized what happened to George Floyd was murder, that there's a problem with police violence. And again, for whatever reason, whether you believe the fact that it's just police brutality or you think there's a system, systematic aspect of racism. And by the way, you should watch that, that debate with Mark Lamont Hill and Kenneth Owens. There was something I learned in that, in that which was that when it comes to actual African-American um, men or, or people being killed, there is no racial disparity. It's in the violence, according to uh, Lamont Hill, that, that, that in low-level aspects of violence, that there's a disparity. And again, I don't know the studies, but this is what he was quoting. Um, so I thought that was interesting and, and that should be looked at, absolutely, because nobody should be, should be suffering that either. Um, I mean, killing people is one thing, but violence, you know, in terms of that is another, and it shouldn't be happening. But Again, I'm not even getting involved in that because it's a much more complex issue that we, we just don't have enough statistics on or information. But it would have been nice to, to, have, to have that study provided because um, I actually would have loved to have looked at it. But getting away from that for a moment, what we're, we're, we're looking at right now is, again, people pushing everybody else into groups. And we're looking at things through a group prism. My tribe, your tribe. And the reality is we're not in tribes. We're, we do have families, but I'm going to ask you, do you agree with everything your brother says, or your sister, or your mother, or your father? I have clients who want to move out of the country because they can't want to listen to their parents because they can't take their form of disagreements with them. This idea that we can't get along with our own family members, yet because of the color of your skin, you fall into a group and therefore are monolithic in thought is totally irrational. And it's sad to me that this is happening more and more and it's being seen by people more and more. I was involved in a training where I was listening to the aspect of exactly putting people into racial groups, stating that if you are this color or that color, you have this ideology or this thought process. And I was absolutely mortified in listening that what you're doing is talking about racism by being racist. Because there are no groups that think a monolithic way. 
And it's interesting when a person from a group who doesn't think like the person from that group or the, or the majority of that group, what they start to say is, you're falling under the spell of the other person. And it's a way of basically trying to invalidate somebody else's thought process and feelings, which again, is totally erroneous. But sadly, this is happening more and more. So when you're thinking about things or you see these things, don't over judge. Don't judge it by the group. Don't say, oh, look, there's that people that do that, because it's not true. We do this also sometimes when we, we see criminal behavior. Oh, look at them. It's not them. It's look at that person. It's not them. Okay. The, the aspect is, and by the way, whether you liked Barack Obama or not, it doesn't matter. You don't believe that Barack Obama was going to go out and start stealing cars. It's just, it's not them. Okay. You can't say he's part of them. But there's just as much likely that the same way that you see somebody who's robbing somebody will be a them. And they could say he's white. Look at them. It doesn't make sense. But people tend to put people in groups that they have less contact with. I've worked in a population for a long time. And I work with people from all different cultures, all different places. There is no them. None. There's a person who has a background, where they come from, their ideology, their thought process. But they're not monolithic in thought. They can be talked to, reasoned with, the same way that you could be talked to and reasoned with. Stop seeing it as us and them. Because there is no us and there is no them. And when you see things that way, you're creating these racial divisions that are actually arbitrary. It's, it's very funny because in the debate, um, and, and I didn't really want to talk much about it, but just is it just a side that just hit me and I really think it would be interesting. Uh, Mark Lamont Hill was talking about the idea of the disparity between basically the, the sexes. Um, and it came up that there's differences in that. And, but at the same time, he was talking about that a man could be a woman and a woman could be a man. Well, all any organization has to do is just have them change. If all it is is self-identification, then there is no disparity. Just have the women who are biologically men call themselves women and then therefore you say now my, my numbers are actually equal right in STEM 50-50 it's real easy now we'll just say by the way who wants to voluntarily change and we're all set and I think that there's a logical inconsistency in that that I don't think he really understood he was saying about that specific issue because you're holding two ideas that are count, counted to each other that if you, you want to hold one position, it makes absolutely perfect sense. You hold another position, it makes absolutely perfect sense. But holding the two positions about the idea that you have to have this idea of equality or equity over a system, and then being able to say you can change what you are in that system, well, then you've just gotten rid of what the idea of equity would be. So, though, and that's just a mathematical, you know, one plus one equals two. It can't equal six. And I think that that was just a funny thing that, as I was, I was talking about this, it hit me. So, you know, that's something to, to understand and think about. I hope that you like this video. I hope that you'll share it with people and to stop the us and them thought process. It really needs to stop. It's dangerous. It makes a bump into a gun battle. And I really want you to understand this is not where we want to go as a society and as a nation. If you like this video, hit like. If you dislike it or you disagree with something I said, please tell me. I'd love to hear it. And again, you can make a comment below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. And if you, again, share this with somebody, I'd very much appreciate that. And again, I wish you a good night and good mental health.